Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Equal Opportunity Committee's 17th meeting of 2013. I can I remind everyone to set all electronic devices either to off or to flight mode. And at the table, along with members and witnesses, are the clerking and research team, official report and broadcasting services, and around the room we're supported by the security office. My name is Mary Fee, and I'm the committee's convener. Can I ask other committee members to introduce themselves in turn? Marco. Marco Biaggi, MSP for Edinburgh Central and Deputy Convener. Hi, good morning. John Finney, MSP Highlands and Islands. Alec Johnston, Member from North East Scotland. Christian Arad, Member from North East Scotland. And John Mason, MSP for Glasgow Shettleston. John Mann, MSP for Central Scotland. Agenda item one today is Ministerial Evidence on LCM S423.1 on the Marriage Same-Sex Couples Bill UK Parliament legislation. Can I welcome our witnesses this morning and could I ask that you start by introducing yourselves? Thank you, Convener. My name is Alec Neil. I'm the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing and I'll let the members of my team introduce themselves, starting with Simon. Simon Stockwell, Family and Property Law Team in the Scottish Government. Julia McCombie, Family and Property Law Team, Scottish Government. Felicity Cullen, Scottish Government Legal Directorate. Thank you for that. Can I now invite the Cabinet Secretary to make a few opening remarks? Cabinet Secretary. Thank you very much. Indeed, Convener, I've got a few very brief uh, remarks to make. Uh, first of all, this legislative consent motion seeks approval for the UK Parliament to legislate on devolved matters in the Marriage Same-Sex Couples Bill. This bill was introduced to the UK Parliament on the 24th of January 2013. It has recently completed its passage through the House of Commons and is due to have its second reading in the House of Lords on the 3rd of June. The bill introduces same-sex marriage in England and Wales and will also allow individuals to change their legal gender without having to divorce. Marriage law and personal status are devolved matters. As you know, we're due to introduce our own bill shortly to legislate for same-sex marriage in Scotland. However, the UK bill does have some impact on Scotland in relation to devolved matters. This legislative consent motion covers a number of areas, including to allow English and Welsh same-sex marriages to be recognised as civil partnerships in Scotland. If Scotland introduces same-sex marriage, we will recognise English and Welsh and overseas same-sex marriages as marriages, but there is likely to be an interim situation after the UK Bill is passed, but before the Scottish Bill is passed. To reflect that, the UK Bill allows persons who married in England and Wales or overseas to stay married and obtain a full gender rec recognition certificate. Such persons may now live in Scotland. To ensure that provisions on fraud and errors in gender recognition certificates will be kept as consistent as possible across the UK is a major objective, and allowing for provision on marriage overseas. The Bill proposes the repeal of the Foreign, Mo Foreign Marriage Act 1892 and its replacement by a power to make orders in council in relation to armed forces, armed forces and consular marriages overseas. It also provides power to make orders containing consequential provisions. We have identified no significant costs with these proposals and I invite the committee to agree to support this legislative consent motion for the UK Marriage Same-Sex Couples Bill and I'm happy to take questions from members. Thank you. Thank you for that, Cabinet Secretary. The committee do have um, a few questions and I'm going to start with Marco Biaggi who's going to start in questions around pensions and then may move on to a couple of other areas and then John Finney, um, on transitional arrangements. Marco. Thank you, Convener. Uh, paragraph 12 of the memorandum refers to powers, order-making powers, that would allow provision on state pensions to be made for Scotland, uh, appropriate uh, provision. Can you elaborate on that and on how much autonomy we would have over pension arrangements after uh, the UK bill passes? Well, obviously, under con constitutional arrangements, pensions is a reserve matter. Uh, and obviously, this bill crosses over both reserved and devolved matters. So this is an area where uh, we are wanting to have complete clarification for people who may be affected by the provisions of the bill to ensure that where, for example, uh, a couple, a same-sex couple get married, or where uh, there is a gender change, for example, without a divorce, 
then that allows the UK government to make the necessary provisions in relation to pensions. We ourselves have no direct responsibility at the moment for state pensions, but there may be aspects that would impact on the provision of public services in Scotland. For example, for some government schemes run on behalf of the Scottish Government, there is a proxy qualification in relation to pension credit. Uh, for example, to get certain types of energy assistance in Scotland, one of the qualifying criteria is that you are in receipt of a pension credit or similar benefit. Uh, and therefore, this would allow the UK Government to make any necessary adjustments uh, to legislation that may impact on devolved areas of responsibility. I'll ask officials if they want to add to that. So the main distinction would be that the UK government could tailor it to fit in with, for example, passported benefits. Exactly. On another issue then regarding pensions, the, there is an, uh, a perceived inequality in survivor benefits between marriage and civil partnership. Is that something you would envisage the UK government addressing or allowing Scotland to address through this order making power? No, I think where it's a reserve matter like pensions, it will require the UK government eh, under the current constitutional arrangement to make those provisions because we have no powers at all in relation to state pensions or indeed to occupational or private pensions at the moment. Can, can I just ask a supplementary um, question on um, pensions? At paragraph 11 of, of the LCM, it, it talks about um, where... Um, a woman is entitled to, to, to state pension benefit on her husband's national insurance contributions, and that entitlement will remain even if the husband changes gender. And the, the question I have is, if it's the woman in the relationship that changes gender, what will, what will the provision be? Well, the, my understanding from the UK government is that um, the entitlements will remain the same irrespective of what particular, whether it's one partner or the other. In other words, I think the underlying principle that they are mm. trying to follow is that irrespective of which partner changed gender, changes gender, the entitlement mm. they would have had prior to that change of gender will remains remain the same. the same. Yeah, that, that's helpful because the, um, the, the paragraph in the LCM leads you to believe that it's only a woman. Um, and it would have to be the man that would change. I think the fundamental yeah. principle is if either, a, if there's a, I mean, obviously it could happen either way, either yeah. the wife changes gender or the husband changes gender, either way, I think the underlying principle must be mm -hmm. that um, the, a, the other partner would not lose any entitlement as a result of the change of gender by their partner. That's fine, thanks for that. Do you want to go into mm -hmm. additional questions, Marco? I also have questions about the relationship between this uh, UK legislation and the proposed Scottish legislation. Am I correct in my understanding that what is happening with devolved marriage civil partnership law is that essentially the status quo is being extended, whereby at the moment, if you have a same-sex marriage in Massachusetts, in Scotland, it will be recognised as civil partnership after this bill. Uh, same-sex marriage in England will be recognised in the same way in Scotland as a civil partnership and that therefore the, the, the decision on same-sex marriage remains with this parliament through the proposed legislation. I mean essentially this part is primarily dealing with an interim situation because uh, clearly uh, on current timescales the UK bill is likely to become law round about October it is likely, uh, obviously, that the Scottish Bill will not become law, law until after October. So there is going to be a transitional period during which the uh, UK Bill will have been passed into law, but the Scottish Bill will not have been passed into law. And therefore, the purpose of this provision is to deal with that interim situation, whereby um, in that interim period, anyone who has been a same-sex couple who have been married in England and Wales, uh, if they then move to Scotland during that interim period, they will be recognised as having been in a civil partnership. When the Sc Assuming the Scottish Bill is passed, then that will change from civil partnership to same-sex marriage. And does our legislation in any other way depend on the passage of the UK Bill? 
Well, out with the, the amendments to the Equality Act, you know, we were, as you know, we announced our intention to introduce this legislation before the UK government took a decision in principle uh, to introduce the legislation. So very clearly our legislation is not particularly dependent on any provisions, but where we, the reason we brought the LCM is not just to deal with the interim situation, but in relation to reserve matters, and we've mentioned pensions already, it just makes sense that we have clarity so that anyone who's either involved in a same-sex marriage, north or south of the border, or anyone who's involved in gender change, north or south of the border, are very clear about the legal situation as it affects things like pensions. Alex Johnson wants a brief supplement. Yes, I was just going to ask the, the Minister's reassurance on the, the other half of that same subject that the, what we're passing with this LCM does not require or presume the passage of Scottish legislation. If for any reason the Scottish legislation did not take place, what we're passing here would effectively be permanent and could be permanent. Absolutely. If, if the Scottish Bill did not pass, then the situation allowed for in the LCM, i.e. that people who have undergone a same-sex marriage south of the border, uh, if they move north of the border and our bill did not pass, then that would be regarded as a civil partnership yes. in Scotland on a permanent basis. Yes, but there's no conditionality within no this. No conditionality at uh, all. And I mean, no presumption no, of what's going to happen. And there's no time limit on yes. the LCM. The, the, that part of the LCM will only be superseded if the Scottish Bill is passed by the Scottish Parliament in that respect. Yes, thank you. Is, is that a supplementary on a specific point? OK, John Mason. Again, on the, on the relationship between the, the Scottish legislation and the UK legislation, eh, as I understand it, Am I right in saying that the Scottish legislation does depend on the UK legislation amending the Equality Act and there would be a problem if the Equality Act was not amended and we went ahead with our legislation? Well, that's out with the LCM. That's a separate issue to the LCM. I should make that absolutely right. clear. Okay. And that's not nothing to do with the LCM. We made it absolutely clear when we announced our intention to introduce same-sex same marriage legislation in Scotland that we would only introduce that legislation if we got agreement from the UK government in principle to amend the UK Equality Act, which is a reserve matter, to allow for protection of uh, celebrants and churches, etc., in relation to same-sex marriage if they didn't want to participate or approve of it in religious terms. Um, and we've said that the amendment actually has to be in situ, in law, before we commence with our uh, activating our bill if it is passed into law, right? That's entirely separate from the LCM process. And that was decided long before and announced in principle long before the UK government indicated that it would introduce a bill for same-sex marriage. No, it's, uh, that's great. It's useful to have that on the record. Thanks. I largely been about to ask that question as well. Uh, the one thing, just for clarity, absolute clarity, there are going to be two <coughs> bills essentially at Westminster. One is the same-sex marriage bill and the other is an amendment to the Equality Act. Those are two completely distinct legislative entities. Well, actually, I think, and Simon will correct me in this, I actually think the amendments to the Equality Act are incorporated in the same-sex marriage bill, but I'm not... I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Simon in that, but... Uh, I think right the, 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 the intention one. with the Scottish amendments to the Equality Act is to do an order under Section 104 of the Scotland Act once the Scottish Bill is passed. So there would be a separate order going through Westminster covering Scottish uh, amendments to the Equality Act and covering probably some other points we'll need to include as well in the Section 104. And as the, the Minister said, we wouldn't commence the relevant provisions of the Scottish Bill on same-sex marriage until the Section 104 order was through Westminster. Okay. John Finney. Uh, uh, Secretary, uh, with regard to the paragraph 29 of the memorandum which talks about transitional transitory saving or consequential provisions, there's an acknowledgement there that there's some uncertainty about um, whether any would arise. Um, um, my personal view, having dealt with legislation in, in a previous job, was it would be unusual if you move from one set of legislation to another, that there wouldn't be issues arise. Could you explain to us, what, if issues did emerge, how they would be responded to, please? 
Well, basically, this is a, a, a fairly typical uh, provision uh, that you would make in, in almost any bill, uh, so that if circumstances change uh, requiring uh, consequential changes by order to the legislation, you've got the powers to do that, essentially. Uh, I mean, let me, let me go back to the pensions issue as an example. Uh, supposing the government made further changes to pension legislation, that then required some of the precise provisions in this to be amended, um, then very clearly this allows that those amendments to take place. In other words, it's not because of uncertainty that exists today, it is to cater for any future changes made that do have a consequential impact on this legislation, so that you don't need to revert to primary legislation uh, to make any necessary changes. We do that day and daily in this place, every legislature does that, and that is a very common kind of provision in any bill. Um, it is allowing you, when circumstances change, to make the necessary detailed changes by order or regulation to the legislation. Let me give you an example. There's obviously a big debate um, about the entitlement of uh, pension rights for women. Uh, in our country. And there's a view, for example, that um, we should do what they do in New Zealand, whereby if a woman has been resident in the country for 10 years, she's automatically entitled uh, to a full pension. Now, that's not the law at the moment in the UK. But if a future UK government or after a yes vote next year, a Scottish government passed legislation to that effect, that could have an impact on the detail of this legislation. Uh, that This particular section you refer to would allow us then to make the necessary changes uh, to, the, to the legislation without having to revert to primary, uh, primary legislation to change this particular act. So you're, in other words, and yet you're constrained by what the main provisions of the act are. You can't, you can't just make willy-nilly changes. It must relate to the provisions in the act. I think that's a reasonable explanation, yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Do committee members have any further questions for the, the Cabinet Secretary and other witnesses this morning? Excellent. Are committee content to approve the LCM? Well, thank you for that. The clerks will prepare a report reflecting um, our decision. As there are no further questions and we have approved the LCM, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and the witnesses for coming along this morning? Thank you very much. And can I thank yourself, Convener, and the committee for your courtesy and your time and support? Thank you. Thank you, Captain Secretary. I'll now suspend the meeting until 9.55. Thank you. Thank you.
the item two this morning is consideration of our draft annual report for 2012 to 2013. Um, paper two sets out a draft of our annual report and we are being invited to agree the report. The report. Can I just say that at paragraph seven there are a few changes that will be made, that will be updated. Uh, some things have been missed out or not put in. One site's not been mentioned. One site's not been mentioned, so the missed out site will be included. Do we have any questions, comments on the draft report? Christian. But, uh, what I would like to say, I was quite uh, pleased with the uh, equalities using concise plain English and papers and reports, and I'm always a uh, great supporter of plain English. Good. For obvious reason. Yes, we like plain English. Yes, yes. yes we like plain English. Anybody have any other comments? Siobhan. Rates that we've had, will they be included? Because I know you said changes, but or is that out with the, the report that we take? That's yeah, out with the report yes, time, is This week's it? debate is out with the... It's out with the report Do you have another time one? Next year's. Or was that in last year's? The previous one? We had the chamber debate in women and work at the beginning. Yeah, that would be that was last... Was it last? Was it last June? I think so. My goodness. <laughs> How time flies. Does so include a line about that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we could put something in about that. Empty get anything else? Okay. So are we happy to so it is in the list. It is in June, yeah. It is there. So are we happy to agree the draft report with the, the one very small change at paragraph seven that we have mentioned? Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you for that. Um, and can I, Marco. Can I just ask when it goes online? Uh, they all get published at the same time, actually. Um, and as there are no further items of business this morning, that concludes our meeting today. And our next meeting will take place on Thursday the 6th of June and will be held in private as it will include consideration of a draft report on our women and work inquiry. Thank you all very much.